the most important aspect in uh, stone treatment is to be able to provide uh, timely treatment but in a way that uh, we can get uh, excellent outcomes for the patient uh, in, in the most efficient manner. So endoscopic combined intravenal surgery has become popular in recent times. We've combined this technique with a prone PCNL using a bullseye approach to give a more accurate needle entry in the collecting system. And it offers the best of both approaches combined in a single session. The literature mainly is supine as a most popular combination, but the standard uh, prone approach we find uh, becoming more versatile. And especially when combined with a bullseye approach, it gives high accuracy and it's easy to teach novice urology residents. In our case, there was a 70-year-old man. He had large volume stones in the collecting system of his left kidney. He presented with intermittent left side of flank pain. The stones also present in his right kidney and this was dealt with in a separate operation. Uh, his general health otherwise is excellent. So in this case, the CT in the axial uh, face shows in the left kidney there was a low-lying pleura which made uh, accessing this approach challenging and there was a large stone bulk in the upper pole and then as well as in the uh, interpolar regions as well as the lower pole but what was marked here is that over the lower pole there was uh, retrorenal colon that made targeting this area more challenging. So in a coronal view, uh, very similar in findings we were able to see the extent of the stone in relation to the kidney and the surrounding anatomy. And along with the sagittal section, we were able to map out the, uh, the three-dimensional structure of the kidney and its relations to the external structures. So this is the um, C-arm uh, fluoroscopy trainer. And what it allowed uh, is uh, outside the operating theatre to be able to teach the urology residency uh, various angles that he used. Uh, in this model, it corresponded to uh, both knowing the axial and the craniocaudal plane and to find the uh, correct axis for the needle to uh, enter into the collecting system. We were able then to uh, demonstrate alignment of the uh, bullseye approach and then with the movement of the uh, C-arm of the uh, fluoroscopy unit, be able to adjust depths. This also simulates when the needle is in the renal parenchyma and be able to advance it into the collecting system. Uh, under endoscopic guidance, then you could uh, do exactly the same movements and then see a needle enter into the collecting system, which allowed for a more precise approach. And this is reproducible uh, using a prone bullseye approach. So we're able to uh, set up this approach on a standard operating room table and then get access to the um, penis here with the access sheath uh, quite easily. This is the intraoperative uh, retrograde pilogram which showed the collecting system anatomy. And here's the uh, lithoviewer uh, ureteroscope that's over the interpolar region. You can see here that it's actually quite medially in targeting. And this is where uh, doing it under vision gave us confidence that we're in the right place. Otherwise, it's uh, usually quite medial and quite disconcerting. Now, this is during the bullseye uh, view, seeing the needle in the renal parenchyma and swinging appropriately. And then with the C-arm repositioned over to uh, negative 10 across the midline, we're able to then uh, judge depths. And then the needle was able to be advanced So it gets in the collecting system. In this case, you can subtly see the movement of the stone uh, where the needle enters the system. So the needle goes into the collecting system, which is denoted by the movement of the wire. Here we couldn't get the camera into the calyx due to the stone being in the way, but you can see the wire uh, comes down through the system, out through the ureter, so we can get through and through access. The next step was that we used a 810 French coaxial dilator to dilate up the track, which then allowed introduction of the metal sheath under direct vision. Again, doing it this approach allowed the trajectory to be correct, and we could also follow that with uh, fluoroscopy. A part of the setup was allowed a second wire to be placed into the system 
and down the ureter. And here you can see the metal sheath actually uh, enter into the correct position without going too far and without going through any of the collecting system adjacent. The unique challenges here was to be able to get a, uh, access into the kidney in the safest possible way without causing undue uh, complications or morbidity. Um, so the other challenge was the uh, very large stone bulk uh, that was in the system and being able to mirror those two together in, an, in a technique and in an operation where we can just do it in a single or uh, uh, as less number of procedures as possible. So the way that we overcome this was that we were able to uh, do a mini percutaneous approach to put in a, an, an access sheath into the back. So we chose a 16.5 French metal sheath that allowed us access into the kidney from uh, an anti-grade approach so the advantage here is through the lith of use scope we're able to treat the majority of the stone bulk in the upper pole safely without having the additional risk of putting a track in the upper pole which normally would happen in this case to be able to achieve complete stone clearance and you can see here the um, the laser is actually breaking up the stone quite easily we use a combination of a dusting setting as well as a fragmentation and the fragments are of a size where they can actually go out, come out through a 16.5 French nephrostomy sheath. The other advantage of uh, a mini percutaneous nephrostomy is that the fragments can be uh, suctioned up using the vacuum effect. And you can see here the stone fragments automatically want to come out. This can also be augmented using a basket where the stones can be uh, removed by this way as well and this can achieve complete clearance of the calyx in all difficult access points in the kidney. The other main advantage of doing it under vision is that you can watch the uh, metal nephrostomy sheath being removed under vision. You don't get bleeding and then at the end you can make a decision to uh, not put a nephrostomy tube in. So after in this procedure a stent was placed in and this was done in retrograde fashion because we left it on a string tether, which can then be taken out without needing another cystoscopy. They're left with a small incision, uh, no more than five millimetres. So following the surgery, the left kidney, except for some minor fragment and debris, essentially stone free. He also had treatment in the contralateral kidney at a later session and there was a stent left in for that afterwards as well. Especially in a teaching hospital setting, I think that uh, doing it this approach uh, combines both uh, uh, patient excellence in outcomes, as well as it being able to be taught at a high level and having a urology residents uh, perform the case and achieving those uh, goals.